Hello, friends, and welcome to Figure Study, where we appreciate the form in Transformers. Today I'm taking a look at a figure I'd actually been wanting to get my hands on for, well, since a little while before it came out, and never really got the chance to get my hands on it until recently, and that would be Mastermind Creations Aeter Beta, which is their version of, I think, Deadlock is the name of this guy in the uh, comics. He sort of drift before drift became an Autobot. That's how I understand it. And yeah, I don't know anything about accuracy or anything like that, so I'm not going to be talking about that. But taken as it is, I think this thing is really, really freaking sexy. This vehicle mode is great. The robot mode is great, which we'll be getting into. And yeah, it's all it's all great. <laughs> I've I've become bit of a Mastermind Creations fanboy over the uh, past several months, I think, and this is no exception. Now, I do have the gun up there mostly because I feel like this accessory works really well in his robot mode, so I'm going to be using it in that as well. Just wanted to have it there for the vehicle so that we have sort of a baseline. And now I'm going to remove it so we can look at the vehicle mode on its own. And it is so pretty. It is so, so pretty. It's this weird kind of, I guess, just sleek future car. I don't know what it's based on. I don't know if it's accurate to the actual uh, comic. And I don't really care. I just think it looks great. Kind of has like a Batmobile vibe to it almost. The way it kind of slopes in, curves down at the front, comes to like a little point. Has little wings in the back. I could dig it. Fair bit of paint and various other details all the way around, like the bumper, and these could be lights, but then maybe these are lights, but then, no, those are vents, so those can't be lights. Got some nice detailing going in there as well, and more vents, I think. And a little arrow to make it go faster, maybe. <laughs> and taillights, and a lot of exhausts along the top here you got this really really nice deep red for the uh i don't know if you want to call that cockpit or what but the windows look really nice and yes it's translucent plastic you can kind of sort of see the there's like a hinge in there but because this shade of red is so dark it doesn't really you don't really see that really so that does not bother me at all. Though if I were to nitpick some stuff in the vehicle mode, which I may as well, I kind of wish that the colors weren't as muted as they are. Like this really, really deep blue is nice. I really like this, but like this yellow is kind of like a, it's like a goldish mustardy yellow. And I kind of wish that they upped the saturation on this a bit, made that a little bit brighter. The grays I'm okay with, maybe the lighter gray could be a bit lighter because it's not that different from the dark gray. Like, it's noticeable that it's different, but I don't know. I just kind of wish they bumped up the contrast in some cases. Because then you've got these, like, really nice bright splashes of white that really stand out, and I just feel like maybe a slightly less muted color palette overall would have looked a little bit nicer and just had things pop a little bit more. Still... It looks good. It's got a nice shape. It's really low and sleek. And then there's folded up robot on the underside. <laughs> but we're not looking at the underside. So get him set off to the side there. And here is a Turveda with a Power of the Primes Deluxe. And as you can see, it's uh, flat but big, <laughs> kind of spread out vehicle. So pretty good size, I think, just overall. And next, because I just couldn't resist, gonna be doing some other Mastermind Creations comparisons. So here is with Nitro, and they look from this angle to be about the same size, but he's actually bigger than Nitro. You can kind of see that uh, he's a little bit longer and there you can see a little bit better how he's longer. About the same width, maybe slightly wider at the back. But yeah, he's a 
bit of a larger vehicle mode than uh, the Nitro, which is totally fine. But yeah, they look good. And I mean, here you can kind of see like Nitro pops so much. And Aether Beta, I, again, I really like that red. That red is fantastic. And I really like this really deep blue. I just wish that there was a little bit more contrast to some of the other colors on him. After that comes Dichemis. And that's a, <laughs> that is a beefy truck APC thing. Like even from this angle, you can tell it's, that is a significantly larger vehicle <laughs> than uh, Aether Beta. But he is a beefier bot, so it, yeah, it works. It makes sense. And last but not least, here is a Beta with Coulter. I don't know, I think they all look good together. And that is that. That's going to do it for the comparisons. Again, love this vehicle mode. <laughs> but now it's time to take a look at a Beta's robot mode. And here we have Mastermind Creations, Aether Beta, in his robot mode, and oh my yes, 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 yes. This robot mode looks really awesome, and I love it. The way that that giant mass of really deep blue that's almost black but not quite ends up giving way to a lot more of the other colors that were kind of spread throughout that vehicle mode is so nice. Here, the muted color palette doesn't bother me quite as much because you get a lot of that bright, bright white and some reasonably bright red kind of thrown into the mix. But I do still think it would be nicer if that yellow was dialed up a little bit more, possibly the gray too, but still. Does not bother me anywhere near as much here. Style-wise, it also looks great. Now I know whatever their regular drift is, I think that's Aether Alpha. I don't know, I'll put the name right up there. That one, I mean, still looks cool in a general sense, but it's super, super white. Lots of white and red. And what I really like about this guy is the fact that you still have some of that white and red, but you get this nice deep blue with like the gray and the yellow and stuff. I just feel like that mixes it up a bit more. It doesn't look quite as overly white as the other one did. And what's interesting about it is a fair number of the things here were actually visible in the vehicle mode. I mean, yeah, the waist and the thighs and the arms, no. But like that chest is totally visible in the car mode. I love how the bumper or fender or whatever splits and ends up becoming knee spikes. When you're looking at them from the side, then you can see more of the car bits, like how the thighs, in this case, it's like the inside of the thighs, but you know, this is close to the same shape where like the sides of the car and then like the feet just kind of fold in and around. So like these details in the ankles were still perfectly visible as well as the toes and the heel. But you know, just a little bit of bending and twisting. Suddenly it's totally a foot. <laughs> That's really cool. And you've got the shoulder pods which don't bother me at all. I know they bother some people, but like for me, I think it's totally fine. I actually think it's really cool how they stick out the back like that. It's it's an interesting design choice. You don't see that often with Transformers, at least as far as I'm aware. The sheaths, I don't know. At first they kind of bug me because he does come with swords. I don't have the swords out right now. I kept them in the box because as I understand it, Deadlock doesn't actually use swords. So it's the one thing is the fact that he doesn't really use swords. The other thing is the fact that for whatever reason, 
this sheath on his right side and the left hand side as you're looking at him is too tight and I couldn't get the sword in all the way and I was actually terrified to push it in all the way because I was worried that if I tried to take it out I would just get the hilt and like the actual blade would stay lodged in there so yeah but I think this looks fine and also there's a thing that I do uh, just like a slight repositioning that I think actually works really, really well to kind of differentiate him even further from the drift version of this. But before getting into that, looking at the head sculpt, uh, I did briefly look at a couple of comic pages for Deadlock from IDW stuff uh, before I applied this repro label. Yes, that is a repro label. Just because I wanted to see like where the Decepticon symbol was on him. Because for some reason I actually felt compelled to try and be at least a little accurate with where I placed the symbol. And that's where it goes. And I actually really like that there because I didn't realize it till after I put the sticker on. But like the stark white in the chest there kind of bugged me. Because there's like a little bit of detail there that you can see. But that Decepticon logo breaks it up pretty nicely. So I kind of like that I put that there. Anyway, the head is, it's a nice looking head. I don't know how accurate it is, but it looks nice. Sort of Gundam-y with the sort of pointy bits on the sides and these big cheek pods, <laughs> but I don't mind it. And I like that some of the details painted, not just the face and the eyes, but like these little gold bits on the sides and in the forehead there. Based on what little I've seen of Drift, that totally looks like it could be like a Evil Drift or Proto Drift. And then from the back, he does have the uh, little cockpit thing just kind of hanging out there, which is fine. It doesn't really hamper the uh, waist swivel either, which is kind of surprising because it looks like it totally would, but no, it just kind of gets out of the way, which is nice. I very much appreciate that. And I also appreciate the fact that Technically, he doesn't really have much in the way of kibble. Like, he's got this, and that's kind of it, because these are sheaths, and these are just his shoulders. Kind of bummed about the fact that, like, I think it's cool that the wheels fold up to kind of clean up the silhouette there, but I kind of wish there was a way for them to soft lock in place or something, because it's too easy for them to kind of rock out and look a little unsightly. Folding them in all the way does not lock anything in place. They'll still roll around. So that kind of kind of stinks. But, oh well. Now in terms of the thing that I like to do to... Uh, it's, it's very, very mild fan mode. But I think it looks really cool. And it kind of repurposes the sheaths. Pull this out and down. That actually frees up the waist swivel a bit more too. And then angle these down and in slightly kind of kind of like that it doesn't change much from the front it kind of gets the sheaths slightly out of the way so that they're not hanging off the hips as much they're not quite as noticeable I don't think but what I really like about it is when you look at him from the side and the back it kind of flows down and makes it almost look like the back of a trench coat I guess crosshairs could take notes but yeah, I think this makes his profile look really, really cool. It does sort of work from the back, too. So yeah, very simple, but I think it's cool, and it does help to kind of set him apart from the uh, drift alike that the uh, other version of this figure is. Giving him his rifle and doing just m very minor tweaks to his posing, and that, that looks really awesome. <laughs> I really, really like this. As is usually the case with most of the figures that I have, I don't know anything about the character, I don't really know anything about the comic that it comes from, but it looks so, so cool. Anyway, let's get him over here so we can start with some size comparisons. There he is with a standard Power of the Primes Deluxe. So he's pretty good size. Also well made, I should point that out. The plastic on this guy feels great. Then again, you know, Mastermind Creations, it's not really a shock, right? And here he is with Nitro. Still kind of bummed that Nitro's legs do that thing where they don't quite uh, 
They kind of go from like stock straight to like out too far. Kind of a bummer. I like how his legs do not have outward ratchets. It's actually pretty nice because uh, I don't have to worry about him with a weird A stance. But yeah, here you can see they're more or less the same height. I think Nitro is just a tiny bit taller at the head. There he is with Dicamus, and Dicamus, as usual, is a freaking beast. I still love this guy. Uh, I need to go in there and do some custom painting and possibly panel lining. I really just want to keep adding to this guy. I love him so much. <laughs> but anyway, yeah. Aider Beta, Dicamus, definitely a bigger bot. Not just height-wise, but like totally beefed out. And last, but predictably not least, here he is with Coulter, and that's a pretty cool duo. They look like they could really ruin somebody's weekend. That's so cool. <laughs> I really, really like these IDW-style figures. They're so cool. Kind of hoping I can get my hands on Carnifex. They're, uh, Overlord. That guy looks pretty freaking cool, too. Slightly different aesthetic and plastic just seems a little bit more textured than these particular uh, figures are from this part of the line, but that's okay. I still think he looks cool. But we're not talking about Carnifex. We are talking about Aether Beta, and I just adore this figure. The transformation is simple but really effective. The way the car parts end up just kind of swinging around to become entire robot limbs or sections of robot limbs is really cool. And while I am kind of hemming and hawing about the somewhat undersaturated color palette, I still think overall the colors on this guy is like the layout and everything, the detailing is great. I love this guy and I love the contrast you get between the darker colors and the bright white. Well, I should say the darker blue and the bright white. I probably would have been a little bummed about the overly white nature of the other version of this guy. And so, yeah, I'm glad I got this one. In case anyone's wondering, no, I am not planning on getting the other one. I kind of, I'm good with this. I'm generally not one to get multiple copies of the same mold. Generally, I mean, the case of Combiner Wars and Power of the Primes with the Combiner limbs and stuff, that's kind of hard to avoid, but you all know what I mean. But anyway, that is going to do it for Mastermind Creations Ater Beta. This is such an awesome figure in virtually every aspect. It's really just nitpicking when I talk about the muted color palette, because it doesn't really bother me. It's just something that I think like would enhance it even more, but not a make or break situation at all. This thing is so lovely and so fun to mess with. Regardless, that is it for him. What do you all think? Any of you out there who are Mastermind Creations fans have yet to get your hands on this guy? You're looking forward to it? Any of you out there not Mastermind Creation fans for any reason? Do some of you prefer the all-white actually drift version over the darker deadlock version? Are any of you compelled to get both? Because, I mean, they're great figures regardless. What are your thoughts? Feel free to chime in down below. I always enjoy hearing from you all. And, of course, feel free to like or subscribe. Any of those things would make me a happy Rob. And remember, art is more than meets the eye. <laughs>